everybody talks about the BMW, Tesla, you know, competitive, you know, California sales showdown. Um, is this going to go up against a Model S, you think? I think BMW, a real BMW doesn't compare to, to any other brand. And that is where electromobility actually comes to the heart of our brand of BMW. And that is the first real dynamic car uh, from, from BMW. So any comparison, I think, wouldn't give the right, right message. First of all, it has an acceleration of uh, only four seconds to 100 uh, kilometers per hour. It has a range of 600 kilometers. That's amazing. And of course, it looks like a, re uh, a real BMW, and that's what we are particularly proud of. The range, I think, has been the hardest to nail, but it's also got, I think, 500 horsepower, right? How do you, as an engineer, how do you achieve that? Because other German car makers have not been able to achieve that. You know, we started our first car, the i3, in 2013. And that's where we started to ponder what is the future going to look like. And we, we, we thought our architectures have to be able to be flexible enough to cater for electromobility and at the same time for combustion engine. And that is the, that's the result of our thinking about this. So you don't think pure electric cars are the future? Necessarily, I think you know. You know, the world mobility market is highly fragmented. There will be specific niches where you can have only electric cars. But I think for us at BMW, where you need all the driving dynamics, which is much, much more than only the actual um, engine in the car, I think this is the right answer for us. But there might be other segments where we own, where, where we only have uh, purely electric um, architectures. But I I am a motorcycle rider. I love the 1.8 liter uh, R18 that you're coming out with. Are you going to have an electric motorcycle, you think, on the market in the next two or three years? We, there are no decisions on, on that yet. But of course, we have prototypes. We are trying with it. But motorcycles is a different market segment than cars. I think electromobility has fully arrived in the car market. Almost everybody is working on it now. And we already sold more than 140,000 electrified vehicles last year in 2019 and we will accelerate that that expansion of our range now. Initial investment is obviously huge when you're starting any new model. You've already um, done a lot of investment in electric uh, production. Will the costs after that start to sink? I mean you need fewer parts in an electric motor. I'm, I'm not so sure that the overall complexity of the car is really diminished. You know, there are so many other components in the car. And of course, uh, to have flexible architectures which we can produce in the same plant as the other engines gives us a huge advantage over the competition. And that's what they are thriving on. What about the headcount? I mean, a lot of your competitors have already started reducing headcount pretty uh, substantially. And you have yet to do that. Are you going, do you need to keep up to catch up with them? First of all, BMW is a growing brand. So we need our people, our workforce, uh, for our growing strategy. And of course, we have started to invest much more heavily, much more in depth into electromobility. So there's no need for us to reduce our headcount. Uh, what about the, I have to ask about coronavirus. Um, there was reportedly a case here at the R&D Center in Munich. Um, is there likelihood that you're gonna have to shut down any production facilities? I can confirm that we had, as of today, uh, one case in, in our R&D center here. What we immediately did, um, that specific person who was a temporary worker was, of course, put into hospital. And 150 people who met him in the past days were asked to stay at home for the next two weeks and, and, and being put under quarantine. That's our, our, our immediate ne measure. But currently, it's not necessary and it would be overdone if we would shut down complete fa uh, facilities. I think with our measures we, we have the right strategy. What is the biggest impact, I mean beyond the people, which I'm sure is your first concern, um, as far as the business of selling cars, when we hear about things like Fiat, Chrysler having to shut down a, a plant, I think about um, the supply chain. On the other hand, when we hear about empty showrooms after the Lunar New Year, I think about the demand. Is it a supply problem or a demand problem? I think uh, you referred to China. We, we, we had the New Year celebrations and afterwards, for about two weeks, people, workers, customers did not return to their normal routine. And that, of course, of course all the, uh, also influenced our, um, our market in, in, in China, specifically in February. But now, the world is already normalizing and we currently don't see any serious effects on our supply chains, neither in China nor here. But that's, of course, something we have to watch every day, every hour. So we will have to see. 
it's quickly evolving the situation, obviously. That's right. Just a couple of weeks ago, your CFO said um, BMW still expects 5 to 10 percent sales growth in China. Can you confirm that that's still your target? We expect growth in China, and we also expect growth uh, uh, for the for the rest of the year over the whole world. Whether that is true for the next coming weeks, I would not be able to confirm. But I think it's far too early to make prognosis for the full year. We still expect that uh, BMW is a growing brand. It's only the beginning of March. Um, it's also the beginning of your tenure here as CEO, which must be pretty exciting. Congratulations on that. What do you bring to the table that's different, or what? Uh, in terms of strategy, do you want to do differently than Harold Kruger? I think we have a set strategy. I've been already almost five years now in the board. So what we have decided, what we have pondered about, will not change rapidly. What we try to do to be faster, faster um, towards the competition. We want to expand more quickly. And I think we have, we have created a very specific strategy which fits perfectly for BMW, Mini and Rolls-Royce, and we are rolling that out now. And you will see that we'll be quite successful. We are, we're, we're quite confident about this. You did run a plant to build those Minis in Oxford. We're going through Brexit right now, and also an important transition without a lot of visibility. What do you expect for the future of the brand? You mean in Oxford, Matt? For, for, for Mini, for the production for in Oxford. You know, for three years we are, we are pondering what could the, could, could the effect be. There has been no effect whatsoever until now on the, on the Mini production, on the Mini supply chain or the Mini brand in, in the United Kingdom. Currently, we will also see what is going to happen in the next 10 months until the end of the year. And, um, but I would be a little bit more optimistic maybe than, than the public. Um, because I think at the end um, everyone will, will uh, make sensible decisions that industries, markets um, can develop further. So, so I'm, I'm slightly confident. Minis I could envision being built somewhere else. I can't imagine building a Rolls-Royce coach anywhere else besides England. It, d does it definitely stay there? Yes, absolutely. There is no other way. There are no other brands whatsoever. A Rolls Royce is an, is, an, is an English brand with English origins, and that will stay there. How, how is the luxury business? I mean, it's arguably the top shelf, a peerless product. Uh, how is that market? I think in the, in the, in the upper echelon of, of that segment, that is uh, the echelon of, of more than 350,000 euros. We are by far market leader. We own 50% of the market share over there. And that is evolving independently, rather independently of the rest of the world. And with our new products, uh, the Cullinan last year, uh, the new Ghost this year, I think we, we have set the ground for further growth. I want to just ask about the importance of the motorcycle division. BMW is the only car maker that's been able to keep um, and thrive with its motorcycle division over time. Um, how important is it to the mobility? How important is it to your vision of BMW's future? I think motorcycles are an important part of any time of urban mobility and also travel mobility. And like cars, motorcycles become a high-tech venture now. And we profit a lot about our competencies we have at BMW on the car side, also for, for BMW. And uh, we will get new emission standards, you, you, you will get new safety standards where, uh, where we are able to cope with because we have all that knowledge from the car business. And that is helping us to, to grow the business. We have been doubling the volume in the last 10 years despite a shrinking market. So we are quite uh, confident that, that uh, we can provide customers who love fun driving motorcycles so that we can provide them with further products. Let me finally ask you, um, when you look at your product range, is there any product that BMW doesn't make that you want to be making in five or 10 years? I think this is, this is a perfect question. We have so many ideas what we could do at Mini, at BMW, at motorcycles and Rolls Royce. There are much more ideas that we could ever imagine. And we will, from step by step, have a look at it where we see a market niche or even a, a growing market where we can step in. And this is our continuous consideration to create new products for, for our customers.